Hello and welcome back. My disappointment is immeasurable. I think a lot of fans are now resigned to the fact that we are just going to limp to the finish line yet again for another season because we still do not know how to even pull out a fucking draw. Not even a win at this point. We can't even pick up points. Um, another loss today, 2-1. I waited three weeks for this shit. And um, it's fair to say that it's just gone from bad to worse when you look at the way in which we lost. The Seamus Coleman own goal, you cannot write it. You really can't. Um, I mean, there was a blunder at one end. And look, Everton were giving off the impression that they were going to be very dodgy, you know, getting to the finish line. And of course, while that goal embodied dodgy, and I mean, we didn't deserve to win the game off the back of the goals we conceded, but... Just the way we played generally, no edge yet again on the attacking side of the ball. Defensively looked a little bit shaky, gave away quite a few chances. I want to start off with the goal of the, well, the second goal. The second goal, the own goal. That was, you know, foreshadowed much earlier on in the contest. A goal conceded in that manner because Jordan Pickford, he's had some really good games this season and he's been a really reliable shot stopper most of the time. Now today, he looked at sea. Like there were so many times he could not find the middle ground between staying on his line and then coming out to collect the ball on crosses. Whether it was skimmed in or it was lofted, he looked at sea. He didn't really know how to deal with it. And it seemed like the communication, which is usually so strong between the back line and the goalkeeper, it looked like it was really severed today. Um, there were a couple occasions where the ball was skimmed across goal. No one dealt with it. Pickford didn't go collect it, even though he was off his line. So he gave off that impression that he was going to grab the ball. So everyone left it for him. And, and I don't really bag Seamus Coleman for the own goal because it shouldn't have gotten through to him in the first place. If Branthwaite didn't clear it, then Pickford had to grab it. It should not have gone all that way across the ground. And, and ultimately, yeah, we've only got ourselves to blame. But it stems from that, I think, um, the loss today. Plenty of opportunities. Um, one ricocheted off the post. It was a set piece, um, a short corner taken. We didn't really get challenged by the Bournemouth defenders. Um, and Dwight McNeil at about the 60-minute mark ricocheted off the post. So that was one good opportunity. DCL had a couple good chances on goal, but those also fell short. And then we have to talk about the penalty, of course. Now, I don't know what's up with the integrity of the game, but it's well and truly gone if you can't have a look at that fucking decision. I don't know if VAR checked it. I didn't hear any mention of it on the broadcast at all. Um... And look, it seems like they just brushed right over it. Now, if you kick a player in the shin or the lower leg and they drop, it's got to be a penalty. It's, it's really that simple. I know DCL, probably his fall was not really attached to the initial kick. Um, but sometimes honesty isn't the best policy in the Premier League, it seems. Um, you actually have to actively milk it and you have to make an absolute drama out of it in order to get your way. And it feels like DCL is that devoid of confidence. He doesn't even want the goals because he probably would have been the guy called up for the penalty. He didn't even want it. He didn't dispute it. No real Everton attempt to swarm the referee because that seems to work with the big six. It's just those things which really summarize where the team's at right now. Like they just don't know really. They don't even want to win it seems. Um, they've forgotten how to win, even simple things like that, simply trying to persuade the ref, even that we're butchering. But I think it really is summed up when there was a, a play in the second half where Bournemouth turned it over in the back half. They had a very high line. Um, we had a two-on-one. We had Decore on the right, Harrison on the left. Harrison was the first um, in contact with the ball after the turnover. Now, he's passed it to Decore, and Decore should have really gained ground before he, you know, let Harrison in with a through ball. But he's gone for some lofted pass with the first touch. And, and you know, naturally, because of the bounce, it just flies off his boot and goes 
way past Harrison. He's absolutely overcooked the pass. That really sums it up. We did not capitalize when given the chance. Um, barring that one goal by Beto at the end. You know what's bad when the goal was scored and I was more in shock. I didn't even celebrate the goal because of how important the equalizer was. I was just more in shock that we had actually scored because we didn't even have a sniff most of the time. Yet again, just, just falling short. I mean, you can only say the same thing so many times over um, and it feels like that's what I'm saying every week. Now, my player of the game, um, I think... It's going to be a pretty surprising call when you hear who I say. It's going to be Seamus Coleman for me. Um, I th actually think he had a really good game. Um, there were plenty of occasions where he wasn't beaten. Um, I think he, you know, did well with the overlap runs. Didn't really put too much into the box. But I think for what we needed defensively, I think he did basically everything that was required. Um, aside from the fact that, well, one goal came off his own body and uh, the other goal came from his side that he was marshalling. But I think the goal that they scored first was off the back of overlap, and and Seamus Coleman had a little bit of indecision about him because, you know, it didn't seem like there was enough coverage. It was a two-on-one. Seamus Coleman was the one, and he needed to work out who he needed to commit to. Um, he went to Tavernier, and they passed it out to Lloyd Kelly, and he crossed it in, and, and they scored the goal from it. Seamus Coleman was sagging off a little bit, um, but I don't think that was really too much of his fault either. I think it's more relied on the players up the pitch to sort of even that up and make Seamus, Co Seamus Coleman's assignment much easier. There was one that really sticks out to me of a real important moment where Seamus Coleman had a split second decision to either remain in the box more centrally for a cross that may come in or try to provide more immediate assistance for... James Tarkovsky, who had been turned by Dominic Solanke, who did that on multiple occasions. Seamus Coleman was the only player ahead of Solanke, so he would have been able to cut him off if he rolled across. And um, that's what Seamus Coleman opted to do. If the cross did come into the box, while they had an open look, they had a player in acres of space, and it would have been an easy goal, I would imagine, um, with the way Pickford was playing, with all that indecision he possessed on the day. Um, but Seamus Coleman was able to win it. A bit of tunnel vision by Dominic Solanke, but um, Seamus Coleman needed to get across to disrupt the play, and he did. So I think those sort of things he did well today. Um, Honourable mentions, I mean, there's probably not too many because there wasn't too much um, cutting-edge play beyond, you know, the defensive half, really. Um, but Dominic Calvert-Lewin did look like he was inching closer to a goal. I mean, he probably should have won a penalty. He did have a couple shots on target. He was getting into some good spaces. There were a good couple of situations where there were a good few first touches, um, you know, pretty quick one-touch football. But um, yet again, we fall short. We just don't have the personnel. We don't have the quality. Um, and look, I don't really know where the goals are going to come from. You cannot afford to concede goals the way we did. Um, when you also consider how badly we've been scoring or the inefficiency of the rate in which we've been scoring, it's so bad. So, yeah, not excited for what comes next. We've got two games in the next week or so. It's Everton-Newcastle first up. Um, that is a later kickoff, which is obviously going to be a tough proposition. And then Everton-Burnley is going to be even more important because those are the games on paper you absolutely need to win. Um, but we just cannot get the job done, no matter the opponent, no matter the, you know, the location, we simply cannot win games at the moment. And um, it's a worrying sign. We've got about nine games left in the season, a game in hand on the majority of opponents around us. Um, but, you know, I don't think that game in hand is going to count for much if you can't really deliver on the pitch when you're required to. Um, and it makes you wonder what on earth was this team doing in the break? Because we've had a three-week absence and we look like the exact same team um, that, you know, dished up that pretty abysmal performance against Manchester United. Usually, um, there'd be a regrouping of sorts. You know, you go back to the drawing board, you change a few things up, but it didn't look like today, um, especially on the attacking side, which is our major shortcoming didn't look like we really were transformative in any way. So um, I am concerned because I don't know what a win feels like. And that tells you a lot 
Um, it's been over three months since we last won. And goodness, I don't know how long the drought's going to go for. The last win was against Burnley, so um, maybe that's the only reason for optimism going forward in the next week or so. But until then, um, I think it's going to be pretty tough going. We'll see how we go. Thank you for tuning in. If you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like. Share your thoughts in the comments about where this team is at um, because it is not a good position to be in. And um, also subscribe if you are new. We'll be back next week or for the next Everton fixture midweek um, to do the full review. Have a good one. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.